praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and we give you the glory this morning. We thank you for your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word, it brings light and it brings life. Heal, deliver, set free. Whatever is wrong, you're able to make right. Turn every situation around, I pray. Thank you for what you're about to do in this place, in this space. Father, every good thing that happens, we'll tell everybody that you did it. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory in advance. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody believe you said, amen. Romans chapter 4. Romans 4 verse 1 all the way down to verse 5. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 all the way down to verse 5. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, has pertaining to the flesh, had found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him... That work it is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that work it not, but believe it on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I'm going to read this out of the NIV. It says, it says, what then shall we say that Abraham, our father, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts in God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about righteousness on credit. Righteousness on credit. When we come into this book, this book is the Roman epistle of our dear, uh, our dear apostle called Paul. Paul, Saul, turned Paul. We know that Paul of the Paul of Tarsus, or Saul of Tarsus, rather, was a tyrant to the body of Christ. The Bible says in, in Acts chapter 9, specifically, he was on his way to bring up uh, Christians into prison when he encountered God and God turned his life forever changed his change his paradigm and caused him to be an apostle of Gentiles understand this that 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 when Paul got saved he was not trying to be an apostle he was trying to pass, persecute the church matter of fact the Bible calls him a Hebrew of Hebrews from the Benjamin, Benjamin tribe, and he was a Pharisee by religion. However, when God got a hold of his life, turned his life around, he became a crusader for Christ. He writes this, 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 this particular epistle at the end of his ministry. Some have said that the, the book of Romans is the, it is the, the, the uh, uh, doctor, d doctoral thesis of Paul. In other words, if you want to know what Paul believes, read the book of Romans. He gives you the justification of faith, all the biblical doctrine of justification by faith. You cannot speak about grace or speak about, or speak about righteousness or justification or even faith without looking at the book of Romans. When, 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 when Paul began this text, or this particular chapter, he says, uh, excuse me, this particular book, rather, when he began this book, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, 
but also to the Greek. It says, and therein, where? Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Because it is written, the just shall live by faith. He begins to tell us in Romans chapter 3, he says, for all have sinned and has come short of the glory of God. He now pens this book in chapter 4, our thesis. He tells us, he says, now let's back up and now bring this individual called Abraham because the, 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 the Jews were saying, I am a child of Abraham. So he says, okay, let us back up and talk about Abraham. Let's see what happens to Abraham. If we can explain what happens to Abraham, then maybe you can come onto my side and, and understand what righteousness is. Are you following me now? So he begins this, this text by telling us, it says, what shall we say then? It says, did Abraham receive the, his justification by what he did? It says if he received it by what he did, his righteousness by what he did, then it's not a gift. Are you following me now? He's really telling you that righteousness is a gift. Are you following? No, 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 no. Go to, go to Romans chapter 5 and see this here when, when he, he spells it out. Romans 5, it tells you that, that, that righteousness is a gift. Now, I'm going to explain what righteousness is. Hmm? I'm going I'm, I'm to talk to you about who, who is righteous. Hmm? I'm going to talk to you about how to find righteousness. Where do I go to find righteousness? I'm going to also talk to you about the, 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 the characteristics of righteousness. Then I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of righteousness. Are you following me now? Because I believe that many of us were being plagued with the fact as, the, the, with the fact as uh, 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 our consciousness or even the enemy is telling us you're not good enough. You're not right enough. Are you following me now? You, you, you are not, you're not, you, you, you're not godly enough. Are you following me now? And so because of all those things, we back up, we back off the promises of God. Now, see what it says. In, in Romans 5 and in verse, hmm, let's go to verse, ah, let's look at verse, verse, um, Let's look at verse, let's look at verse 14. I'm really, I'm really going to verse 17, but let's, let's look at verse 14 so you can get some context into this text here. It says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that were, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? But not, not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if, where, if, if, for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abandoned, abound, excuse me, unto many. It says, and not as if it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, and the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. Are you seeing this here now? So your reigning in this life is predicated on you understanding your righteousness. So if I can attack your righteousness, I can attack you reigning on the, on the earth. Are you following me now? If I can, if I can pollute and delude and cause you to look to look uh, uh, unfavorably about your righteousness, then somehow you would negate to reign or you would back up from your stance as a king. 
Are you following me now? The Bible says, is there no king in thee? Why? Because you are, de you are designed to reign. Okay, okay. And so, and so, and so, and so, uh, uh, Paul begins to pen this particular thesis as he begins to talk about righteousness. So my first, my first assignment is to tell you or to explain to you what is righteousness. What is righteousness? Are you following me now? Righteousness is a state of being morally upright and just Confir conf confirming to the word of God. I'll say it again. Righteousness is the state of being morally upright and just confirming or, 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 or aligning yourself to the word of God. Righteousness uh, comes from a, a word that means it means to be right. That's the root word, to be right. It means it means to have to have want to have the nature of, of of being straight it also means it means to have to have a natural or moral correctness let me let me let me let me let me let me bring this uh, 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 in a different light here righteousness means li right alignment with god a right alignment with god that means I align with what God is doing in my life. A, a right, what? Alignment with God. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm in sync with what God is doing. Are you following me now? I'm not going against what God is doing. I'm in sync with what he's doing. Now, now, righteousness is the ability to stand before God without any shame, condemnation, or fear. Fear. Hmm? It's not based on your stance. It's based on what Jesus Christ has already done. Are you following me now? Because if you try to stand or, or base your righteousness based on what you have done, then all of us fall short. Are you following me now? All of us do what? We fall short. But our righteousness is based on what Jesus Christ has already done. Now, Let's begin to uh, let's begin to unpack this because I want you I want you to understand that righteousness is is important. It is important to what this this uh, uh, f to what this Christian Christian faith holds. Righteousness is God's overwhelming overwhelming righteousness is God's overwhelming desire. To treat you and I as if, as if we've never sinned. Righteousness is God's overwhelming desire. It's a gift to treat you and I like we've never sinned. Are you following me now? Now, 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 as Paul begins to write this text, he says, he says this. He says, uh, my prayer for Israel, this is in Romans chapter 10. My prayer for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to, not according to, not according to knowledge. It says because their zeal of God has, has tried to establish their own righteousness and have negated the righteousness of God. Are you following me now? They've negated the not righteousness of God and such they've, they've now tried to establish their own righteousness. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 18 and we're going to be going through a lot of text. So get your Bibles. We're going to go get your phone, get, get you know, your Android, your, your iPad, your, 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 you know, your, your, uh, your Bible. Amen. And we're going to be going through a lot of scriptures here. Uh, Luke chapter 18 righteousness what on credit yeah I'm right not because of what I've done otherwise I can pay for this not because I got no money truth is I ain't got none at all but I got some credit yeah my credit is good I, I said my credit is what is good now in Acts 18 let's look at this 
Because the truth is, the truth is, when in the dark, in the booth, in the back, when there's nobody there, the enemy's whispering into your ears, whispering into your, 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 your heart and telling you, you ain't no good. Especially after you've gone out of this fast and some of us have, have gone into back to our old ways. And the enemy is trying to convince you, I told you that 21 days ain't going to do you no good. Hmm? I told you, you, you ain't, are you following me now? You've got, to, you've got to counteract the enemy, letting the enemy know, I am righteous because he is righteous. Okay. In Romans, in, excuse me, in Luke 18, and let's look at uh, verse 9. Luke 18, verse 9. And he spake this parable unto, unto, un, un, unto certain which trusted in themselves. What did they do? They trusted in themselves. It says this, uh, that, were, that, were, that were righteous and despised others. Hmm. Ain't it somehow folks, how, how folks get this, they get this righteous, ment this righteousness mentality. How they're, they're so superior to everybody. Because they've been, they've been two days in the church. Huh? And now everybody that do, that that been doing the same thing that they just did two days ago, they want to condemn them. Ain't that something? Hmm? Notice what it says. It says, it says, it says, it says, notice what it says. They trusted in themselves and that they were righteous and despised others. It tells you what, what the parable, what the, what the par how the parable goes. Two men went up unto the temple and prayed. One was a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisees, the, the Pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself. What did he do? He, he was praying to himself. Hmm? He, won't, he thought he was praying to God, but his prayer didn't go, didn't go nowhere. Hmm? His prayer was to himself. Notice what he said. Otherwise, there's the posture of prayer where your prayer don't, don't, don't go nowhere. There's a posture of prayer that, you, that, that doesn't get it, that does not get heard. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Notice what it says. Ah, okay. In, okay, I, I want to go to another scripture, but, 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 okay. Notice what he says. It says, He pray, he's prays to himself, God, I thank thee. It says, it says, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, I, uh, adulterers, or even as this publican. Hmm? He says this, I fast twice a week. Hmm? I, I fast 21 days. I give tithe to all that I possess. This is a good guy. You'd say, amen. You look at him. He's over here fasting. You look at him, he's paying his, his tithe. But he got a wrong motive. Notice, the Bible is not written to unbelievers. The Bible is written to believers. Why? So we can look at it, look at it as a mirror. Hmm? As a mirror. Why? Because, because this tendency could be in our lives. I said this tendency could be in our lives. Where, where you think you're holier than thou. God's gift to mankind. Hmm? You, you, you looking down on everybody. Are you following me now? And, 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 and you can't even relate to anybody no more because you're so holier than thou. So heavenly minded that you're no earth, earthly good. Are you following me now? Can't even relate to anybody. Are you following? Because people need people that they can relate to. They don't need people just looking up, you know, like you ain't never cursed before. Hmm? You ain't never fornicated before. Are you following me now? You, 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 ain't never, you ain't never heard a bad joke before? Are you following me now? No, I don't, have to, I don't have to be that, but I can relate to that. Are you following me now? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can help you out of that. Okay, okay. See what it says. He says this. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. 
And the publican standing afar off would not, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. The other who? The other who? The other Pharisee that was, that was saying how I fasted and did all those things. Are you following me now? For everyone that exalted himself shall be what? Abased. And he that humbles himself shall be what? Exalted. Hmm? So this, 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 so part of righteousness has to do with humility also. Humility. That I'm not better than anybody else, but at the same time, nobody's better than me. And so I'm not going to put my head up high and look down on anybody because God is still working on me. Are you following me now? God is still doing something in my life so I can give them grace just like I can receive grace. Are you following me now? So I'm not going to I'm not going to allow the enemy to use my mouth to condemn them. But I'm going to use my mouth to lift them up. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And so and so this idea this this idea of righteousness is right alignment with God. Right alignment with who? With God. I'm going with God. Are you following me now? This idea of righteousness is, 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 is a state of rightness with God. Where I'm not looking at my pedigree, what I've done to stand before God, but I'm going before the throne of grace because of his, because of, because of his unmerited grace on my life. Okay, okay. Now, 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 let's begin to, let's, let's begin to um, uh, 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 reveal this to us. Okay. So now, we understand, according to Isaiah 6, 64 verse 5. Let's go there. Isaiah 64 verse 5. Isaiah 64 verse 5. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Isaiah 64 and verse 5. Hallelujah. Isaiah 64 verse 5. It says, it says this. Thou, thou meetest him that thou, 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 thou meetest him that rejoices and work in righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art worth a, a wrath, for we have sinned in, in those in, in continuance, and we, and we shall be saved. But we are all as unclean, unclean thing, and all our righteousness are, are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf. Our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Are you following me now? Notice what it says. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we need to understand, we need to understand that there is a thing called our own righteousness and there's a thing called God's righteousness. Go to Romans, go to Romans 10 and verse 1. I quoted that, or I, I quoted that already, but let's, let's look at this. Romans 10, 1. Glory be to God. I don't know about you, but I don't want my, I don't want my, I, I don't want to stand in my righteousness. Are you following me now? I want to stand in what? In his righteousness. See what it says in Romans 10 and verse, in, in verse 1 all the way down. It says here, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Israel, that they might be saved. I thought Israel was already saved. Huh? It says, my prayer is that Israel be saved. But for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. And many times, it's our zeal is misplaced. 
You, you, know, you follow me now? We, we are on fire for God, but we're burning everything in our path. I said we're on fire for God, but we're burning everybody and everything in our, par- our path. And our, it, it, that ought not be. Our fire should draw them in, not to, draw, not, not to, not to set them running. <laughs> I said our fire should draw them in, not to, not to cause them to keep to take off. Okay, let's see what it says. It says this. It says they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, are going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves, what? Unto the righteousness of God. So what is our task? Our task is to submit ourselves to what? The righteousness of God. So what are we talking about? We're talking about what? Righteousness, what? On credit. Are you following me now? Righteousness, the word righteousness is, is mentioned in the Bible 558 times in the Bible. 558 times the word righteousness is mentioned. I reckon that, that it, it is important. I said I reckon that it is what? Important. 558 times the Bible talks about in some form or fashion about righteousness. Your right alignment with God. How you stand with God. I say how you stand with God. Hmm? Because how you stand with God determines if God is with you. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, this is a whole lot. This, okay, 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 okay. Now, 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 now. Now. Okay. Now, the question now begs for us to answer is, we've talked about, we've talked about what is righteousness. Yeah. Now let's talk about who is righteous. Who is righteous? Well, somebody said, well, God. Well, I reckon so. He got to be righteous. Okay, let, let's look at that. Let's look at this. Let, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, um, who, who, who is righteous? Well, God is righteous. Turn your Bibles to Psalm, Psalm, one, Psalm 11, verse 7. Psalm 11, verse 7. It says, in the NIV, it says, For God is righteous, he loves justice, and it, he upholds, and the upright will see his face. Let me, let, me, let me read this again. It says, God is what? Is righteous. Who is righteous? God is. Make no, diff- no, make no mistake. Your God is a righteous God. Are you following me now? You don't serve a crooked God, a twisted God, a conniving God, a bootleg God. Are you following me? You serve a straight God, a justified God, a God of integrity. Are you following me now? That's who you serve. Now, 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 now. See what it says. It, 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 uh, 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 Psalm 11, verse 7. Notice, it says, for the righteous... For, for, the, for the righteous God loveth righteousness, his countenance does behold the upright. That's what King James says. It says, the right, it says, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. Hmm? You gotta love righteousness. Otherwise, you gotta love things that are straight. Hmm? Things that are pure, things that are holy. Things that are sanctified. Are you following me now? Yeah. Yeah, you got to change your love from all the other things that are bringing you down and align yourself with God. Now, now, righteousness, righteousness, oh, let me put it this way. The gift you receiving, you receiving the gift of righteousness or God's righteousness empowers you to be righteous. Are you following me now? Because part of righteousness affects what you do. Are you hearing me now? But what you, okay, what you do is a result of, what, of how you have been empowered. The problem is we have been focused on We've been too focused on what we do, and we have not embraced the gift of righteousness. 
The gift of righteousness empowers you and I. It's like I gave you a gift and you never used it. Hmm? Are you following me now? It's like, it's like, it's like, okay, it's like you, you're trying to go buy your jacket. Are you following me now? And I came, I came, I like you so much, and I gave you my credit card. I said, whatever you want, go, whatever you want is yours. You say, well, Pastor, I can't pay for it. Don't worry about it. Just, t- just take this gift. Hmm? But now you want to go to the store and you want to drag me to the store. And I told you, you can buy whatever you want. But you waited for me to buy it when I told you, you can buy whatever you want. So you never buy it because you waited for me to buy it. But I already gave you the gift of the credit card to buy whatever you want. Are right, you following me now? Your, that righteousness is the gift that empowers you to get whatever, to do whatever you want to do. The problem is we've been trying to do it without the credit card. What we're talking about. Righteousness on credit. Yeah, yeah. You, you, we're so focused on the doing and not understanding the gift. I have the gift in other to do. If you don't have the gift, you're going to struggle in how you do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not helping anybody. I've got the gift, and so I can do it. Somebody say, I've got the gift. Yeah, I, I've got the gift. So I don't, have to be, I don't have to struggle to be righteous. I already got it. I got the gift. And so because I got the, the gift, I'm, I'm now empowered to do. Okay, the problem is many of us, the, or the problem is what we've heard is, okay, I got the gift, so I ain't got to do nothing. And so I can revert back to my old ways, but I still got the gift. But the problem is, why, why, why take the gift if you're going to revert to your old ways? In other words, if you're going to live like the devil, why are you going to be saved? If I'm still going to shack up, fornicate, steal, lie, are you following me? Cheat. So why be saved in the first place? Just be that. Just be that. Now you follow me now. But when I, have, when, I, when I receive the gift of righteousness, it empowers me to live godly. Empowers me to live holy. It empowers me to say no. It empowers, empowers me to live right. Why? Because I got the gift. Somebody said, I got the gift. I've got the gift. But if you don't know you have the gift, you're going to struggle with your doing. Hmm? So we talked about what is righteousness. Now we're talking about who is righteous. Who, who, so who is righteous? Okay, okay, let, let's go to another scripture here. Let's go to hmm, Psalm 145 verse 17. Psalm 145 verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 145, verse 14. See what it says. 17, excuse me. 145, verse 17. See what it says. It says, 145, and verse 17. It says, for, it says, the Lord is righteous in all his ways. Ain't that true? What? What? All his ways. He don't, he don't have no crooked ways like some of us do. Yeah, we got ways at the church and ways at home. Ways where somebody's there and ways where ain't nobody there. That's not your God. Your God, he said, he said the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Ain't that a beautiful thing? I said, that ain't that a beautiful thing? He said, the Lord is not unto all them that call upon him to call uh, to all that call upon him, what? In truth. In truth, part of righteousness means you're walking in truth. Hmm? You're walking in truth. The, the, beauty, the, beauty, the beauty about truth is it never changes. <laughs> truth never changes. When you tell a lie, guess what? It can change. Yeah, a lie can change very quickly. Depending on, depending on who's, who's asking, who's asking you. Are you following me now? And you begin to different versions for, 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 for different folks. But the truth is always the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you God. Are you following me now? 
No, 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 no. So what did we say? We said, we said, we said, we said, he said, we said, God is righteous. Yeah, he's righteous. Then in, in verse in verse 16, just, just out of fun, I, it ain't even my text, but out of fun, verse 16 says this. It says, thou openest, openest thy hand. And satisfy the desire of every living thing. Ain't, ain't that a, somebody ought to give God praise. Somebody ought to give God glory for that. Magnify your God. He opens his hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. I don't care what you, what, whatever your desire is. God, op I saw, he's already opened his hands to satisfy your desire. Are you following me now? Are you? Okay, 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 okay. So who is righteous? Who we're talking about what? Who is righteous? Who is righteous? Go to go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5. Zephaniah, I know you need some help to get there. That's all right. Zephaniah is in the Bible. I uh, trust me. Is, is in there. Zephaniah 3, verse 5. See what it says. <laughs> Ze Zephyr what? Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3. And verse 5, see what, it, see what it says. It says, the Lord is righteous. The, the Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Now, this is the NIV. It says, he does no wrong. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice. And every new day, he does not fail. Yet, the unrighteous knows no shame. I'm gonna read this out of the. Um, I'm gonna read this out of the, uh, the, the the King James version. See what it says. It says, "The Lord is just. The, the Lord, the, the just Lord, is is in the midst thereof. He will not. He will. He will not do iniquity. Every morning does he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knows." No shame. Are you following me now? But what is this saying? It's saying that your God, it says, your God is what is righteous and he does no wrong. And he does this morning by morning. There's no morning that you wake up that God will never be just or God will never be righteous. It's morning by morning. So what does that mean? It means how, it means how to emulate my God. Resemble God. Ain't that, what, ain't that what we are supposed to be doing? The Bible says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Ain't that what we are supposed to be doing? Genesis chapter 1 verse 20 says, let them have dominion. Are you following me now? He says, we are formed in the image of God and in the likeness of God. Okay, so who is righteous? We said God is righteous. Well, who else? Well, let's turn our Bibles to uh, let's turn our Bibles to um, 1 Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. 1 Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. 1 Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. See what it says. 1 Corinthians one verse thirty. But of him, of, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness. And sanctification and what? And redemption. It says, but of him, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who in God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The NIV says it this way. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become to us he has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So what does that mean? It means that you and I are, you and, it means that Jesus Christ, excuse me, is our salvation, our redemption, but also our righteousness and our wisdom. Hmm? So what does this mean? It means that Jesus is also righteous. We're answering the question. We're saying, who is righteous? Well, we said God is righteous. Jesus Christ is, has, is, is our righteousness, so he is righteous. And who else? So let's go, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 
1 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Who else is righteous? 2 Corinthians, what? Chapter 5. Let's begin to ask the, answer the question, who else is righteous? See what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and let's look at, let's start in verse 17. 17. It says this. Wherefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things, and all things that are new are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of recon recon reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God did beseech you and us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath, he hath, he hath made him to be sin for us. Who? God had made who? Jesus Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin. Why, God? Why did you do that? That we might, we, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now we are made righteous. I said what? We are what? Made righteous. I say, I say, we were made righteous. You were not righteous, but you were made righteous. Hmm? It's like it's like you go to a um, a foreign a foreign nation. You are not a citizen of that nation, but as but they have they have requirements or things that you can do that at the end of you doing what you supposed to do you become us uh, you become nationalized as a citizen of that nation are you following me now could be it could be your it could be your um uh, 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 by way of association in other words your parents are part of that country and so you become automatically part of that country. Are you following me now? Some, some of us, we understand the, the notion of being birthed in a country. Are you following me? And so, because you are birthed in that country, you now, as, you now assume the nationality of that country. But, some, but, 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 but what if you were not born in that country? Hmm? And so now you're being nationalized. You're being made a citizen based on requirements that you have done. Are you following me now? So what, what am I saying? You've been made a righteousness of God based on Jesus' requirement that he's done. The requirement was the one that had no sin, what, became sin, so what? So you and I. That's why... I don't understand why people begin to um, act like whatever they got, they, they act like whatever they got, they, they got it by themselves. Are you following me now? There's nothing you have that you, there's nothing that you had that you had anything to do with. Bible says this. Who, Bible says this. <laughs> Who are you to, why are you acting like you got what you got by yourself? And if you got what you got based on, based on what somebody else did for you, why are you, why are you may liking that you all that and then some? Hmm? In other words, you know, some folks that are cute, they be acting like they're cute. I'm like, like they had something to do with it. You ain't got nothing to do with your cuteness. Are you following me now? You think if we, if we got something to do with them, you think I'll, I won't pick a better nose? I pick a better eyes if I had something to do with it. Huh? I pick a better shape. 
Are you following me now? But you ain't got nothing to do with this, so you ought to give God praise for what, you, for what God has made. Whatever you got, you ought to give God praise for it. The Bible says you're wonderfully and fearfully made. Are you listening to me now? So you have to have the right posture. The right posture is not to put your head up there and act like you stem some and you're, you're all that and then some. The, po the posture is a posture of humility will get you far. Humility. Humility will get you far in any, in any place, any day, any time. Are you following me now? Humility. In other words, the Bible says when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, what happens? He will exalt you in due time. Humility. 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 Say, I I'm, going, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to yield so you can win. Humility. Humility. Are you following me now? Okay. 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 So, so, so who is righteous? Well, God is righteous. We know that. Jesus is righteous, we know that. But you, the believer, has been made the righteousness of God. Hmm? What, what I want, I, I want you to leave out of here with a sense of, with, with, with faith, with faith coming up on the inside of you. So much faith that you, you look at the devil when he, when he shows up in your bedroom at the dark, in, in that dark place, and you tell him, I'm still the righteousness of God. Are you following me now? Now, 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 now. Now that we know, we know we are righteous, righteous. Notice, let's go to, hmm, let's go to, ah, let's go to, okay, let's go to Romans 5. Verse, okay, we, we looked at that already. I, I, I think I looked at that already. Okay, let's look at, let's look at, let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. We know that we've been made the righteousness of God. Huh? Yeah. Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. How am I doing? Y'all getting anything on this? Okay. We know we've been made the righteousness of God. But now being made the righteousness of God, does that, does that give me license to do whatever I want to do? Hmm? License just to do whatever I want to do. I'm going to just do whatever I want to do because after all, I've been made the righteousness of God. As if you being made the righteousness of God came so cheaply. Hmm? Are you following me now? It cost the blood of God to make you the righteousness of God. It cost God everything he had to make you the righteousness of God. Are you following me now? And you ought to cherish that. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, notice what it says. It says, Know ye, know, know ye not that, that, that the unrighteous do who? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does that mean? It, it means if the unrighteous does not inherit the kingdom of God, what does that mean? It means the righteous does. Hmm? Yeah, the righteous does. But the righteous does not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but when it's all said and done, I want to get to heaven. <laughs> Are you following me now? I thank God for y'all crazy folk down here, but I got to go to heaven. Are you following me now? Yeah, yeah, I, I got to go to heaven. Where the Bible says that, that, that the street are gold. They're not paved with gold. They are gold. And the gates are pearls. Are you following me? I want to see all that. Are you following me now? Yeah, I want to see all of, all of that. I want to see with my own eyes. Yeah, I, I, want, I, I want to walk the streets of gold. Glorifying God, magnifying God for all that he does. All that he's done. And I want him to say, thou, thou, welcome thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in that which is little. Come on and reign with that which is much. Hmm? 
Are you listening to me now? No, 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 no. See what it says. It says, know ye, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit, what? The kingdom of God. It says, be not, what? Deceived. Now, wh why would it say that? Why would it say that? Because you can be. Be not deceived. Deception is, deception is subtle. Deception, deception is never, is never blatant. Deception is always subtle. Deception is you think you're right, but you're wrong, but you think you're right, but you're wrong, but you think you're right. Deception. Deception is, is, is a trap of the enemy. Is that, is that, the deception is that language we're hearing now where grace covers, grace, it don't matter what you do. That's deception. Because it just, it just told you here, it just told you, it says, it says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it does matter what you do. Hmm? Notice what did I say? I said, I said, you, you, the reason why you do righteous things is because you have been empowered by the gift God has already given you. Are you following me now? Other words, let me say it this way. I'm not, right, I'm not righteous because I go to church. But righteous people go to church. I'm not righteous because I don't fornicate. But righteous folk don't fornicate. Are you following me now? Fornicate means, you know, folk sleeping around. Sexual, uh, any kind of sexual advancement outside of marriage is fornication. Any kind of sexual uh, 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 experiment outside of marriage is fornication. Are you following me now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not righteous because I don't commit adultery. But righteous people don't co commit adultery. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Notice what it says. It says, it says, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the, the, the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators... No what? Idolaters, no who? Adulterers, no infeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, and so and such were some of you. Hmm? Such were what? Come on now, y'all ain't talking to me. Such were what? Some of you. Other words, that's what you used to do. You don't do that no more. Such were. It is a such are. The problem with the body is such are still you. <laughs> then we say, oh, no matter. that don't matter. We just get some sloppy grace to cover it all. It is as such are some of y'all still now still now looking at me. He says such were some of you. Okay, let, let me read this out of the, the NIV because some of them words you will never you will never use that in, 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 in Accra, Georgia. Are you following me now? You will never say in feminine, you, you ain't never heard no re re revelers. So you don't know what that means. Are you following me now? And so let's read this out, let's read this out of the NIV. NIV. Therefore, if any man be, okay, I'm, I'm in the wrong scripture. Okay, yeah, there we go. It says, it says, it says, don't you realize that, do, that, 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 that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? So those that do wrong are the unrighteous folks. Amen? Okay, let's, let's, let's keep reading. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sins or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusers or, or, or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you 
were once like that. Anybody? Any takers? Yeah, I was once like that. Yeah. Hey, your, 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 did you see your resume there? Yeah. But, 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 but was once like that. Are you following me now? Not still am. Once like that. Okay. 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 Then it says this way. It says, but you are cleansed. You are holy. You've been made holy. And you are made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. You, are, you, are you following me now? Yeah. You've been made the righteousness of God by calling on the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of God. Now, now I've got to, I've got to close. I, I, I'm, I got to, I'm not done, but I got to close. Okay. Now, 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 now. Understand this. You and I have been made the righteousness of God. So what does that mean? It means that we're ambassadors of Christ. What does that mean? It means there's no condemnation. The enemy's weapon is going to be condemnation. Based on what you've done. Are you following me now? And some of us have good days. Somebody say good days. Yeah, you got some good days. But some of us, have, we, some of us including me, got some bad days. Somebody say bad days. Yeah, B bad days is when you do, you do stuff you know you're not supposed to do. Anybody. You, don't, don't, don't look at me with that, with that sanctified look. I, I, are you following me now? Yeah, you got, some, you got some wrong days, some sin days. And it's not, this was no mistake. You, you went in there with your two eye open. You knew it because the spirit of God was telling you, don't do it, don't do it. But you won't listen, you see. And so you jumped in there and committed that sin. And what happens? The enemy shows up with condemnation. Hmm? Condemnation. And you say you, you say you, you say you're a pastor. You say you're, you say you're, 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 you're a praise leader. Mm. You say you're a church goer. Mm. Condemnation. So what do you do with that? In my remaining minutes, let's do that. Romans, Romans 8, Romans 8, and in verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 8. Because the truth is, many of us, all of us face this every single day. I say every single day. The Bible calls the enemy the accuser of the brethren. Hmm? It's a weapon. He weaponizes this idea of condemnation. The Bible says in Romans 8, Romans 8 and verse 1, verse, we'll look at verse 1 and 2. And uh, we'll look at, um, ah, yes, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, it says, it, says, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. When the enemy comes against you with condemnation, condemnation, you got to tell the enemy there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I fell, but in the name of Jesus, I repent, and I'm back in Christ. Are you listening to me now? And now, because I'm in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation in the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me now? And you take your righteousness back because righteousness is not based on how you feel. Righteousness is based on who you are. Are you listening to me now? Now, 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 now. Understand this. I said, I said, I, I said, I said, I said that, that condemnation is what is a weapon of the enemy. I said is what? A weapon on the, of the enemy. Go to, go to Isaiah, Isaiah 54. It's a weapon of the enemy. Hallelujah. Why? The, the reason why, the reason why, the reason why condemnation Wants to, wants to hit your life is because he wants to erode your confidence in God. Are you following me now? Because when, you're, when you are condemned, what happens? Your heart now condemns you. 
And the Bible says, even if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart and knows all things. Are you following me now? But the enemy wants to, con he wants to, he wants to condemn you so you can lose your confidence. And the Bible says, there is therefore now, he says, no, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says this, it says, cast not away in, 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 uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says in verse, somewhere, somewhere around verse 35, it says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Cast it not away. The reason why the enemy has weaponized condemnation is because he wants to erode your confidence. Cast your, your confidence away. Are you following me now? Yeah, I know you did wrong. God knows you did wrong. Are you following me now? But you can repent because the Bible says, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And so I get back in right standing with God. Are you following me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Notice what it's an Isaiah. Isaiah what? What did I say go? 54, Isaiah 54, and verse 17, see what it says here, 54 verse 17, glory be to God, it says this, it says, it says, no weapon formed against thee shall do what, prosper, I said condemnation is what, a weapon, you say pastor, what, what do you mean by that, let's keep, let's keep reading, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment. That's the enemy's, the enemy's tongue. Yeah, it may be talking through somebody, but it's the enemy's tongue. Yeah, it says, it says and every tongue that will rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt thou shall, condemn. This is the heritage, what? of the servants of the Lord, and their what? Righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Hmm? Their what? Their righteousness. Why? Because, the, the, because the, the weapon of condemnation is going after your righteousness. Are you following me now? Their righteousness is of what? Of me, said the Lord. So I'm righteous because he's righteous. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's do one more and we're done. So their righteousness is of me. Righteousness, righteousness affects your heart. And, okay, and out of your heart flows the issues of life. Notice what it says. In Romans 10.10, 10, it says, For with the heart man believes unto what? Unto righteousness. And with the mouth, okay, let's go there, Romans 10, 10, because you, some of you are just looking at me like, Pastor, I, yeah, I want to, I, I don't know, it, 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 the, 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 okay, let's go there, amen. <laughs> amen, I love it, I said I love it, righteousness on credit, I said righteousness what, on credit, yeah, yeah, watch me spend my righteousness, I don't know about you, but I'm going I'm to go, I'm going to go charge my righteousness, yeah, R Romans 10.10, 10, notice what it says. N now, what did we say? We said, we said, the, the, the whole nuance here is the condemnation is going after your heart. And your heart is where you're going to lose it or win it. I said your heart is where you're going to lose it or win it. Okay, okay, Romans 10, notice what it says. It says, well, we, we, can, we, can, we can start in verse 9. It says, for if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you saved. Pray. Somebody say, I'm saved. That's all you got to do to be saved. You ain't got to go nowhere. You ain't got to buy nothing. You ain't, ain't got to put nothing on you. All you got to do is do that scripture right there. And what, what happens? You saved. Then it, says, then, it, then it says this. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. It happens in your heart. I said it happens in your heart. That's why... You can say it with your mouth, but if your heart ain't in it, it ain't going to connect. It's a heart thing. Somebody says it's a heart thing. It's not just a mouth thing. It's a heart thing. Okay. It says, for with the heart men believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you following me now? Somebody said it happens in the heart. 
It, it happens in the heart. Now go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 verse 14. Ephesians 6 verse 14. It happens in the heart. Hallelujah. It happens where? In the heart. Ephesians 6 verse 14. It says, it says, it says this. It says, it says, it says in Ephesians 6, 14, Stand therefore, stand therefore, having your loins guarded about with truth, and having, ha, and having, having on the breastplate of what? Of righteousness. Breastplate is what? Covers what? Your heart. Are you following me now? The, bless, the breastplate of righteousness covers your heart. And the enemy is after your heart. Why, pastor? Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4, let's go there. Proverbs chapter 4, and let's look, at, let's look at verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23, and we're done for the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why, why, why would the heart man believeth the breastplate of righteousness of the heart? Why, pastor, Proverbs chapter 4 and what? And verse 1. Come on, class. Verse 1, 21, 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the what? The issues of life. The issues of life comes out your heart. You win it or lose it based on your heart. If your heart ain't in, in it, you ain't going to ever have it. Are you following me now? If your heart condemns you, it's not going to happen for you. Are you following me now? The, 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 the victories in the heart comes out of the heart. I'm not talking about the heart that pumps blood. That's no different than your ears or your mouth. You ain't got no faith in it. I'm talking about the core of who you are. The heart of who you are, your your, your center, your your core. I ain't talking about this heart that you know your physical organ. Are you following me now? I'm talking about the, your, the spiritual essence of who you are. Out of your heart does what flows the power of life. The power of life. Now, now, now. now. Why is this so important? First Peter. First Peter. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3 verse 12. And we're done for the day. First Peter chapter 3. Somebody say I'm righteous. Somebody look at your name and say hello righteous. I'm righteous. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God because he made me righteous. He made me righteous. I'm not righteous on my own pedigree. I'm not righteous on my own education. I'm not righteous based on what I've done. I'm righteous because he made me and I the righteousness of God. And so I'm righteous because he's made me that. One last scripture and we're done. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over what? The righteous. The eyes of the Lord are over what? The righteous. So God's eyes are on me. God's eyes are on me. And notice what it says. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Anybody? His ears are open unto their prayer. Yeah. Yeah, his ears are open unto their prayer. Amen. Are you following me now? Why? Because I'm the righteousness of God. What are we talking about? Righteousness on credit. Were you blessed today? Well, somebody stand to your feet and give God some praise in this house. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. The righteousness of God. The righteousness of God because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
old things have passed away and behold all things are made new and those new things are of God he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God father we give you the praise all over this building we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor we thank you Lord that your grace and your righteousness is is new every morning and we give you the praise for it we thank you for all your many blessings spirit of the living God thank you oh God for doing a mighty work a fresh work a clean work thank you for making us new on the inside thank you oh God for touching us in such a special way thank you for allowing us to understand that even if our hearts condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. In the name of Jesus, heads about, eyes are closed all over this building. You hear today, you say, Pastor, that message was for me. That message, I needed a, a renewing of, the, of knowing that I am the righteousness of God. That message resonated in my being jacked my faith up to another level that's you this morning just lift your hands all over this building i see that hand all over this building all over this building all over this building hallelujah father we give you the praise hands that are raised they're raised because you spoke to them you're quickening their spirit this is what you're, this is what they're supposed to hear father you're doing a mighty work in them even right now we give you the praise and we give you the glory. Let that spirit of righteousness, the righteousness of God, let it be infused on the inside of them. Let them see it in a different light. Father, we bless you for all that you have done. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We receive unmerited grace, abundance of grace. Thank you, Lord for the gift of righteousness to reign in this world. And we bless you tonight. We honor you this morning. And we lift you up for all that you have done in the name of Jesus. Will somebody give God praise? Come on. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. What a blessing. But well, we never want to close the broadcast without telling you that Jesus loves you. We love you and we, de we declare that your best days are not behind you. They're right in front of you. If you will accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, he will do something magnificent in your life. Don't be a stranger. Write, comment, tell somebody what God, what God has done. And I guarantee you, as you testify, the Bible says we'll, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. As you testify, God's going to do something awesome, miraculous, and amazing in your life. Until next week, I am Pastor Michael. This is Cretus Church. And we are saying, Jesus loves you. We love you. And all is well. In Jesus' name, God bless you.